Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Thursday, January 12th, 2017 edition of VR News. Lots to talk about again. It's just been a really good week for VR News. Let's start with Dirt Rally VR. Now, Dirt Valley Rally VR is a game that is cockpit based, shines with a good steering wheel, available for both Vive and Rift, and now, according to the devs, will be ported to the PlayStation VR. So no word on the timeline for that, the cost, just that it's going to be available at some future point. Now, to me, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. Some indie devs can survive on the number of, you know, PC VR devices that are out there. A lot of the AAA publishers or just larger publishers in general, it's a little tougher unless you've got exclusivity agreements, etc. So Dirt Rally, another way to do that is simply be available everywhere you can. Maximize that revenue stream, which looks exactly like what they are doing. Next news piece, Skylight for Gear VR. This is a, a turn-based strategy meets real-time action game. According to the reviewer on Upload VR, it has great graphics. There's really no issue for him, even though it's uh, you know mobile-based and inferior GPUs. He likes the graphics. However, the gameplay much weaker than the graphics, and overall, you know, wasn't super in love with the game. Probably about average if you read between the lines. But with that said, it's probably a game I'm going to feature on a quick look. Curious if any of you have tried that game. That's Skylight for Gear VR. Now, right on the tail of that, another closure. This one is going to be a little bit shocking. It was to me when I saw it. Developer Guerrilla Cambridge. That name might not mean a lot. They were closed by Sony. But they are the developers for Rigs, which was a VR launch title. Now, what puzzles me is it got good reviews. I'm assuming the sales were probably okay, although not enough, obviously, to sustain them and make them a little bit more self-sufficient. But why the hell did Sony not entertain bringing a version of that to PC? You know, it's not like they're worlds apart anymore. There's obviously fundamental differences, but if you've got, you know, a good standard game programming language, you can port it with, I won't say absolute ease, but relative ease. It's not an impossible task and it increases your potential revenue stream. So beyond me, why that wasn't even an option, given that they're not really competing. I don't find Rift and Vive competing with PlayStation VR. Freaks like me that have all of them, well, you know, yeah, maybe we're going to buy rigs once, but a lot of other people, they're probably going to buy it for either a Rift or a Vive. So, to me, that just doesn't make sense. I'm sure there's a reason for it, probably not one I'm considering right now, but either way, they are gone. All right, first big story. This hack has been around actually since November, and I remember hearing a little bit about this. It wasn't enough to kind of, you know, turn my attention, go on full research mode and figure out more about it or try to dig up more, but it's come back to me. And the issue I'm talking about has to do with PlayStation 4 Pro units in conjunction with PlayStation VR. For some users, they're experiencing black screens. It can last anywhere from a few seconds to basically permanently until reboot or update which to say the least would be freaking aggravating if you were one of those people. Now, obviously lots of PlayStation 4 Pro owners saying everything is just fine, likely not a hardware issue. In fact, the leading theory is that it's a setting compatibility issue between HDMI handshake or HDR related because a lot of the fixes when you look for them involve either of those. So probably something to do with that and it doesn't sound like the percentages are high enough but I am curious if any of you out there with a pro and the PlayStation VR have gotten this black screen that they're talking about. 
All right, next news story. This one from viewer Lee Knight. Thanks again, Lee. Sent it to me this morning at work. It's a product, an app, a system called Coalescence, which is a mixed reality training system from a company called Rockwell Collins. Now, they are a multinational American company out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And according to their website, they provide avionics and IT systems and services to governmental agencies and aircraft manufacturers. You go to their site, you see products offered and a big focus on things like cabin management applications for the airline industry. They cater to air, land, sea, kind of all the different terrains. And what this is, is basically training simulator using mixed reality. So for example, a standard cockpit simulator would be something you sit in. The cockpit instruments are usually real instruments tied into software that's displayed, you know, if it's a Boeing 737 on the Boeing 737's screen. So you're basically going about the simulator with a combination, but not really mixed reality. What this system does is it ups the ante and allows you to take real world objects into that cockpit with you and they can factor in. So just imagine the training involved, you know, having some kind of instrument that you had to do something with at some point. And whether you remember it or not is another question, but the capability of doing that is there with real world objects. So that could add a lot to training systems. Very cool, have a look. It's basically their own brand of case. I'd love to see the parts. They call it ED80, ED100 is their product line, but admit they use commercial graphic cards, although they didn't specify which. So I'm curious, just part of me, AMD, Nvidia, Neither Intel. So interesting. Either way, looks really cool. Thanks for that, Lee. Next news story involves Panasonic, uh, who was also at the CES event last week. This story didn't get told right away. It's a bit, a bit of a straggler, but Panasonic had a headset at the event. Now, one of the reasons this hasn't probably gotten a lot of publicity is it's directed at business, enterprise, not home consumer market. Now, their claim to fame with this device is a massive horizontal field of view of 220 degrees. So I think that's even more by 10 than Star VR. Now, each eye, there's four individual displays in total, two per eye. Each of those displays is 1600 by 1400 for a total uh, resolution of 6400 by 1440. Now, the problem is the lenses are fused together. And the issue with that is visual clarity, acuity. He noticed a lot of distortion, the author, when he tested the device along those seams where the lenses were fused to get that. Plus, the vertical field of view was way too short and he felt that was immensely distracting. In addition to that, there was also noticeable latency. Now, to be fair, he points out, this was a you know, test device prototype, not the final commercial version. It's obviously going to be some work done. And like I said, it's not gonna be consumer. They plan on shipping 2018. It will be business, training, education, medical, and professional markets as they're markets of choice for this. Next news piece, Facebook conducted a social experiment, which I pretty much think is kind of crap. Almost a metric ton of crap. Definitely schlock worthy. Haven't had one of these articles in a while, guys. All right, what the hell am I talking about? Well talking about this Facebook experiment, which was supposed to see who would react more favorably to social VR, introverts or extroverts. I would love to see the questionnaire for this because the main thing they got wrong in this, they stated 
shyness and lack of confidence as being traits of introverts, which is absolutely not true. I am an introvert. And I think I mentioned this once before in a previous video a few months ago, but I have no problems being on camera, no problems giving business presentations, being on stage, acting. I love it. What I don't like is mingling afterwards or social parties like dinner parties where you got to mingle with a bunch of people. I can do it, but my God, at the end of that, I am so drained and I need downtime. Me alone or with a buddy, a, <laughs> my wife, for a couple of days just to recharge. So don't agree with them on that aspect. Extroverts can also be shy. Extroverts can also lack confidence. You can be okay in a social situation where you're going from person to person, but that same extrovert might not be able to get in front of a group of people, might be too shy. So just went a little haywire on the old, uh, on the old meter there. But the results, regardless, let's announce them. Introverts, 83% versus extroverts, 57% responded positively and fostered real relationships on the virtual train. That was the setting. The application they used was VR Time, which is a social VR app. It was also the app that I believe we talked about last month that got that new recording feature. I wonder if that factored into this. I couldn't find that, but curious. I'll check that after. Let me know your thoughts on that, guys. Any of you introverts, extroverts, do you know, do you care? There you are. Next news story. This one was pretty cool. Tech company called Eonite. They believe they have solved inside out positional tracking for virtual reality. Well, they say the same for augmented as well, but let's dig into this a bit. This comes literally right on the heels, guys, of what we were talking about the other day when we talked in the comment section at large about inside out versus outside in. And during yesterday's news, I believe it was, that topic came up again. Now, Eonite is a Silicon Valley startup company, and they have amassed a pretty sizable war chest through investment seeding. Five and a quarter million dollars US is what they've amassed from Silicon Valley venture capitalists, some other companies, but mostly Silicon Valley capitalists or venture capitalists. Now, their goal is to make VR and AR more fun, as they put it. And one of their investors' employees, the name Rick Thompson, he represents and works for Signia Venture Partners. He said in an interview that Eonite has nailed inside out tracking. So had to talk about this, had to look into it. And currently with an outside in tracking system, the cameras or whatever kind of sensor is used, that makes up 30% of the total cost. The advantage, obviously, that you get for that additional up to 30% is accuracy. It's a very accurate system compared to current inside out. So very interesting. Now, they're not getting into any specifics in terms of that, but they have hinted because they say this is their proprietary developed technology. They don't want it leaked until they are ready to come to market with it. So instead, what they've done is given some of the capabilities and as follows. So the venture beat writer who tried the Eonite device said because of the prototype status, it was basically a 40 degree limited field of view camera. 40 degrees would be brutal, but nonetheless, let's get into it. So what it offers, according to the reviewer, real time obstacle detection. So you could do things like walk around uh, the, with the camera and programming, and it'll have detection for obstacles. You won't bump into those. Things that are transiting through pets, other humans also picked up by this tracking system. It's even able to support mapping and tracking through multiple rooms, which gave me this really cool idea. So I'll digress for a second here. Imagine being able to, with one of these mixed reality systems, there's a game, it's a horror survival game, some kind of zombie outbreak, whatever the hell you want it to be, 
but it involves your actual place, your apartment, condo, house, whatever the hell you have, mapped out, looking pretty damn realistic, and then having monsters, zombies, whatever, take place in that setting. I just think that would be so cool. And I have no doubt, probably within five to 10 years, we'll have exactly that somewhere. They also have an SDK, which includes home scale and real-time 3D scanning and reconstruction that supports persistent virtual content, occlusions, and shadows. So very cool. Link in the description below. Have a look at that. I've included three links. Road to VR, Upload VR, and Venture Beat for that story. Really cool. Now, this last one here. Interesting. This was on techweb.com, also on Upload VR. Basically, the headline read on TechWeb that HTC Vive has overtaken the virtual reality, augmented reality outlook in GDC state of the industry survey. So the Game Developers Con Conference. Here are the results. So I'm going to put this up, but check this out. So almost a complete role reversal between Vive and Rift. Now, to be fair, Rift rose from 19%, I believe, on this survey and... Like polling, surveys are not always an accurate thing or even close at times. But regardless, they went from 19 to 23%. HTC Vive from single digits up to that 24%. Now, this is no doubt in small part because of the number of units out there and the slightly more open nature of developing for Steam VR for both platforms, probably. Uh, but having that initial one be the Vive, and then probably down the road, do a Rift version. But either way, the statistics to me look fairly healthy, but at the end of the day, that's exactly what the hell they are, statistics. And like that old saying goes, you know what, we won't even get into it. We'll leave it right there. Cheers, guys, as always, and definitely, especially with this green screen, I bought a much bigger one the other day, which I'm tinkering with. So my next um, Quick Look Games will be in that, but I got to do more testing and practice with it. As always, guys, cheers. Catch you guys on the VR flip side.